Good morning and welcome to our worship. What a time this is. Here we are talking to you over the internet, over whatever means you are looking at, whether it be on a uh, computer, a handheld device, a phone, whatever it might be, or just listening in. We welcome you this day as we gather in God's name to hear God's word, to rejoice as God's people. In these uncertain times, it is so good to be able to do so. We gather as one uh, in a little different way, but yet with the same familiar things, with our pul pulpit, with the cross ever in the background, and with the word of God to guide and direct and lead us. And so we worship. Please bear with us. We're still learning how to use this system and how it will work for us. And uh, we'll do the best we can. Hopefully there will be improvements each time we come on. And we pray God's blessing on that as well. One of the things that comes when you try and put things together quickly is, uh, and with the social distancing uh, that we're all practicing now, is that uh, sometimes we have to improvise. Today we have no music. Uh, that doesn't mean we're not going to do the hymns. It gives us an opportunity to do something a little different. We have the hymns printed for you. And what I'm going to do is invite you to listen to them. Maybe even to read along if it uh, suits you. Uh, because so often the music is beautiful, don't get me wrong but uh, it's too easy to miss out on what the words are saying to us, the wonderful prayers that these words offer for us and uh, in which we gather together. Our opening hymn today, Praise the One Who Breaks the Darkness. If you have a hymnal at home, it's hymn number 849 in the Lutheran service book. Praise the one who breaks the darkness with a liberating light. Praise the one who frees the prisoners, turning blindness into sight. Praise the one who preached the gospel, healing every dread disease, calming storms and feeding thousands with the very bread of peace. Praise the one who blessed the children with a strong yet gentle word. Praise the one who drove out demons with the piercing two-edged sword. Praise the one who brings cool water to the desert's burning sand. From this well comes living water, quenching thirst in every land. Let us praise the word incarnate Christ who suffered in our place. Jesus died and rose victorious that we may know God by grace. Let us sing for joy and gladness seeing what our God has done. Let us praise the true Redeemer. Praise the one who makes us one. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thus says the God, the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people on it, and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness, I will take you by the hand and keep you. I will give you as a covenant for the people, a light for the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we pause for a moment of silent reflection. Lord, 
Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are, by nature, sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake, forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, your mercies are new every morning. And though we deserve only punishment, you receive us as your children and provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant that we may heartily acknowledge your merciful goodness, give thanks for all your benefits, serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We hear the word of the Lord today first from Isaiah chapter 42. This will also serve as the basis for our meditation in the sermon. For a long time, I have kept silence. I have been quiet and held myself back. But now, like a woman in childbirth, I cry out, I gasp and pant. I will lay waste to the mountains and hills and dry up all their vegetation. I will turn rivers into islands and dry up the pools. I will lead the blind by ways they have not known along unfamiliar paths I will guide them. I will turn the darkness into light before them and make the rough places smooth. These are the things I will do. I will not forsake them. But those who trust in idols, who say to images, you are our gods, will be turned back in utter shame. Hear ye deaf, Look, you blind, and see, who is blind but my servant, and deaf like the messenger I send? Who is like the one committed to me, blind like the servant of the Lord? You have seen many things, but have paid no attention. Your ears are open, but you hear nothing. It pleased the Lord, for the sake of his righteousness, to make his law great and glorious. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading from Ephesians chapter 5. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of the light, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth and find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. It is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, and everything that is illuminated becomes a light. This is why it is said, Wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. 
The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As he went along, Jesus saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus, but this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. After saying this, he spit on the ground, made some mud with the saliva, and put it on the man's eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam. This word means sent. So the man went and washed and came home seeing. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had been blind. Now the day on which Jesus had made the mud and opened the man's eyes was a Sabbath. Therefore the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He put mud on my eyes, the man replied, and I washed and I now see. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others asked, how can a sinner perform such signs. So they were divided. And they turned again to the blind man. What have you to say about him? It was your eyes he opened. The man replied, he is a prophet. To this they replied, you were steeped in sin at birth. How dare you lecture us? And they threw him out. Jesus heard that they had thrown him out. And when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? Who is he, sir? The man asked. Tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus said, You have now seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. Then the man said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Jesus said, For judgment I have come into this world, so that the blind will see, and those who see will become blind. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. All right, kids, it's time for our special time together, so come on over here with me. And... Uh, Normally, I would ask you how you're doing today, and my guess is you're going to be uh, maybe sitting there in your pajamas yet, I don't know, whatever you do at 8 o'clock in the morning when you're at home. But we're here together in worship, and we're here to think about some things that were spoken to us in God's Word today. So first thing I want to do is I want to ask you uh, to do something for me. Turn away from the device that you are watching on so that you can't see me. Okay, have you all got your backs to me now? All right, very good. How many fingers am I holding up? What, you, you can't see them? Well, of course you can. You're not looking in my direction. Now you can turn around and look and you can see I'm holding up five fingers. Let me ask you another question. Think about this one now. Can you tell me which football player I'm thinking about right now? Hmm. Can you see it? Can you see who I'm thinking about? Well, of course you can't see who I'm thinking about. If I told you I was thinking about Jordy Nelson, I'd probably have fooled most of you. He uh, played for the Packers for a long time. Well, what was my point? Well, you can't see what you're not looking at, and some things you just plain can't see. As we look at our world today, it's kind of scary, isn't it? But there is something that we can see, not with these eyes, but with the eyes of faith that God gives us. We can see just how much he loves us. 
loves us so much that he sent Jesus to die on the cross for our sins and then raised him on the third day so that we might always, always have hope. We're going to think some more about that in the sermon in just a minute. Thanks for participating in this today. And again, without music, we won't be able to uh, sing the hymn of the day today. But again, I will read it. I invite you to follow along with the words as you see them on your screen. The hymn is Christ Whose Glory Fills the Skies. It is hymn number 873 in the Lutheran Service Book. Christ, whose glory fills the skies. Christ, the true and only light. Son of righteousness, arise, triumph over, o'er the shades of night. Day spring from on high, be near. Day star in my heart, appear. Dark and cheerless is the morn, unaccompanied by thee. Joyless is the day's return, till thy mercy's beams I see, till they inward light impart. Glad my eyes and warm my heart. Visit then this soul of mine, pierce the gloom of sin and grief. Fill me radiancy divine, scatter all my unbelief. More and more thy self display, shining to the perfect day. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to tell you about a fellow I met with in college. Um, even though I grew up about 20 miles from him, I never met him until attending college. His name was Dave. Dave was an amazing person, an amazing man. You see, at the age of 12, he developed a rare and uh, really devastating disease which took his eyesight. He, in, within a year's time, went from poor eyesight to completely blind. Dave was a character in both senses of the term. He was a man, and he is a man of character, but he was also quite a character as well. Now, Greek and Hebrew are hard enough to study. There are different languages with different scripts, and Hebrew in particular with an entirely different way of thinking and expressing those thoughts. Well, guess who was leading the class in both languages as well as just about everything else and having to do it in Braille? But, of course, Dave. Dave, when you were walking along the sidewalk, he would be walking with his cane to find his way. And it was amazing how often he would greet people by name. He obviously couldn't see us. Somehow or other, he figured out who we were. One day, I uh, was in spring, and, and uh, it was one of those beautiful days. I was walking back to the dorm from class. And I saw a car coming slowly down the street, and it honked, and they kind of it kind of stopped out there. And it was Dave, and he had glasses on, and he was driving. And he said, "Charlie, it's a miracle I can see." And he said, "Have a great day, bye." And he took off, and he went down the corner, and he turned, and went on up the street. What, well, of course, we couldn't see, and what we didn't know is that. Dave had Dennis uh, laying on the floor with a periscope watching the way and telling Dave who was there, where to turn, and when to stop. They only went a little ways on the campus road, so it was safe, but wow, he was a character. Dave really could not see. He was not totally independent. He could do a lot, but he still 
needed someone to help him, needed others to help him get around to other strange and different places that he was, where he was not available. He needed someone to show him the way. I get frustrated when I need these just to see what's in front of me. Dave, uh, he couldn't see anything. And I think that's kind of the way it is for a lot of us in these dark days of the coronavirus, the novel coronavirus outbreak. Days when we can't see an end to the challenges, an end to the isolation, an end to the anxieties and fear of the unknown. You know, there's a greater kind of blindness that we need to talk about along with that today. What is it like to lack a vision for God? What is it like to not be able to see God, to know God, to understand God, what is on his mind? What's it like to be without hope and a future that only God can give? Now you would think that God's ancient chosen people of Israel, if anyone would know him and would rejoice in him, this is not just any old God, but the true God of grace and mercy. And they could clearly see his love in their lives each day and confidently look to an eternal future with him. But so often they fail. Listen again to Isaiah's words to them and to us today as well. Who is blind but my servant? And that like the messenger I send who is blind like the one committed to me, blind like the servant of the Lord? My servant, Isaiah said. That refers, first of all, to God's chosen people, to the Israelites, the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They've been called to be his beloved, set-apart people. They were called not only for that, but they were called to proclaim the mystery and wonder of God in the world. Their problem? Idolatry. They turned to focus on self rather than focus on God. Turned in on themselves, they could not see God as the one, the only. And so easily, it seems, they looked to the other gods around them for the blessings that they need. Even with God visibly present in a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night as God led Israel to freedom from slavery in Egypt, they grumbled about the way he chose to lead them and about how he provided for them. Instead of praising God as they should have, they grumbled against him. And when the Lord did bring them to the promised land, he cleared out everything and everyone who could be in their way so that they could be blessed, so that his name might be praised, so that he might be present among his people in the tabernacle and later in the temple. But Israel, the chosen people of God, to be God's banner of love for all to see, to receive his blessings through them, Israel instead fell into worshiping other gods. And that cycle of Israel's idolatry and foreign occupation by invading armies and judgment, and then repentance and deliverance by God, well, it's a cycle that gets repeated throughout the history of God's people of old. Couldn't they see God's blessings, his very presence among them? Couldn't they see God's just judgment that would come if they turned from him? It all looks so clear to us, which leads us to an important question. Can we see it coming? How often do you hear these days, why can't the government finally get this right? After all, this is not a political issue. This is a human issue. Coronavirus is spread all over. 
Why must it take so long to make a vaccine or to provide the supplies that medical professionals need? When can we go back to school, to work, to dining out with friends and family, to travel as we wish? It's the middle of March, we should be watching uh, the, the March Madness right now. There's not a sport on TV that's not an old recording. When? When something really stupid or really tragic happens, many begin to question rather than to trust. We think we should be able to see exactly what's going on, exactly what's going to happen, to know really what we want to know, to control our lives so that we can bring what leads us to health and prosperity and happiness, the great American dream. You would think that we would learn from the past. This is not the first time an epidemic has come. It's the first time a pandemic of this nature and of this scope has come in my lifetime. But it's nothing new we can learn from history. And it's not just Franklin County or even Kansas or even the United States. This is a worldwide event. All that we thought we could see clearly is threatened. The economy, our daily lives, even life itself, as the pandemic spreads to more and more people. Are we surprised at our blindness? We shouldn't be. Our natural, natural born within blindness to God and the things of God, it's what theologians call the old sinful nature, is still a reality. It always wants to drag us down and tear us away from the God. And when that happens, we look to other gods, small g. God's more convenient more conventional, more comfortable, gods that we can control. <laughs> but are they really gods then? Because they ultimately lead us into the darkness of sin, and in the darkness of sin comes death. Again, God asks, who is blind like my servant? You've seen many things, but you paid no attention. Your ears are open, but you hear nothing. That's what Isaiah said of God's people of old. Does it apply to us today? Are we any different? We all too easily look at our community, but we fail to see people, our friends, our neighbors, perhaps even our own family members. There, we fail to see their greatest need of all to spend an eternity with God in his blessed presence. We may not notice the needs of others, the needs of our church in which our gifts of time, talent, and treasure could truly make a difference, but we pay no attention to the opportunity or the blessings which may result from such sacred service. And it's not just in the church. We listen to the appeals to get involved in loving God first and loving our neighbors as ourselves, but we so easily fall prey to disobedience to the Spirit's call. We seek, we even demand God's blessings, but fail to hear and humbly obey God's call to repent and return to him who loves us who loves us enough to call us back to himself, back to him who can heal, who can give sight to we who are blinded by sin. Faith must precede sight. Faith, only then can we really see what God would have us see, and what God would have us see most is his love, love made perfect in the servant of God, the perfect servant of God, who hears and sees it all. Who is like 
my servant, God asks, the servant of the Lord would take upon himself all the darkness of sin itself. He would become the worst idolater, adulterer, blasphemer, thief of all thieves, drunk of all drunks. Jesus took our place under the curse of God's holy and perfect law. As the true servant of the Lord, Jesus did this because he is exercising the love of God. He did so as the Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. He himself has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows so that sin and its blinding consequences might be defeated once and for all that we might be freed from the eternal consequences of our sin, namely death, eternal death, that we might be freed to return to life, life with God, with confidence, both now and forever. For the punishment that brought us peace was upon him. By his wounds, we are healed. On the cross, in a moment of time, Jesus, the suffering servant Savior, became the guilty one who died so that we might live. In him we see real hope, real peace, real joy. Even in these troubled times, we see it through faith in that Savior who came and did the things we couldn't do and now gives us insight into God's love reveals God's love, opens God's love to our hearts and eyes and minds. He comes to us in the pages of Holy Scripture, the Bible, and we see there the love of God the Father who would shape our, our lives in such a way so that we can truly live, live the life of love that he's designed us for, love to him, love to our neighbor. Faith sees the goodness of God even in the darkest hour, when all seems hopeless, when we are helped, faith focuses on God's grace, God's mercy. God is always present. He is with us, always blessing. God's people can see by faith because God has removed from our eyes the darkness of sin and death and eternal condemnation so that we now as the apostle said, might walk by faith, not by sight. No, this is not always easy. It's not painless. Yes, we still bump into things in the darkness of this world, but we're headed home to God. And until then, he's shining the brightness of his love on us and through us as he now invites us let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We join now in confessing our common Christian faith and the true triune God in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I invite you to confess your faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, from whence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. At this point in the service, we would ordinarily collect our offering. We would pass the offering plates from person to person. 
We're gathering virtually, so we can't do that, but we do invite you, as you are able, to remember to offer your thanks and praise to God in a tangible way. As you are able, we realize that many are going to be unemployed, many are struggling financially as well as uh, emotionally during these trying times, and yet the work of the church does go on. The bills still need to be paid. We still want to bring the gospel to all, so do remember, and uh, if you have opportunity, send your offering to the church via uh, mail, drop it off at the office. Uh, please, no cash if you do mail. I invite you now to join me in prayer. And let us pray. Gracious Lord, shine your light of mercy and grace into our darkened hearts of sin and eyes blinded to your will and ways, so that we know the fullness of your forgiveness, life, and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing Lord, shine your light of peace and healing to all who are sick and those who seek relief from any trouble. We pray especially for Doris and Sharon who were hospitalized this week, and for all who are troubled by uh, many and various uh, concerns and illnesses and, and problems. We pray especially for those nearest and dear, dearest to us whom we bring before you now, Lord, in silence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of all nations, shine your light to all places in this world and to the leaders of cities, states, and countries, that your light guide and direct them so that peace may be had and justice faithfully served. Give courage and diligence to all who work to defend liberties and life, and to those who speak to those who cannot speak for themselves. We pray especially during this pandemic that you would bless scientists, medical care providers and professionals, first responders. We pray that you would bless them and give them insight that you may, through them, as your means, bring relief to our troubled world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of the Church, Shine your light upon our congregation, that we remain united in truth, love, faith, and service. Give courage to live as your witnesses, that we may remain in darkness no longer, uh, that we who remain in darkness might rejoice in the light of your truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, in this season of Lent, shine your light upon us as we examine ourselves, see our sins, and know our need for a Savior. As we follow Christ to the cross, draw our hearts and minds to you and the joys that await. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the members of our congregation, and especially for the Austin and Lisa, David and Carol, Ryan and Michelle and Rocky and Tiffany families that the Spirit might fill them and empower them to share the love of Jesus with others. We pray, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
our closing hymn today, O God of God, O Light of Light, hymn number 810. Again, I invite you to uh, follow along with the words, sing them if you wish, and uh, uh, I will read them for you. O God of God, O Light of Light, O Prince of Peace and King of Kings, to you in heaven's glory bright, the song of praise forever rings. To him who sits upon the throne, the lamb once slain but raised again, be all the glory he has won. All thanks and praise, amen, amen. For deep in prophet's sacred page and grand in poet's winged word, slowly in type from age to age, the nations saw their coming Lord, till through the deep Judean night rang out the song, Good Will to Men, sung once by firstborn sons of light, it echoes now, Good Will, Amen. That truth of that life of truth, those deeds of love, that death so steeped in hate and scorn, these all are past. And now above he reigns, our king, once crowned with thorn. Lift up your heads, O mighty gates, so sang that host beyond our ken. Lift up your heads, your king awaits. We lift them up, amen, amen. Then raise to Christ a mighty song and shout his name, his mercies tell. Sing, heavenly host, your praise prolong, and all on earth your anthem swell. All hail, O Lamb for sinners slain, forever let the song ascend. Worthy the Lamb enthroned to reign, all glory, power, amen, amen.